Hey everyone, you're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash, and it's not Ghostbusters. No, it's Martian Manhunter number two by Steve Orlando and this Rosmo guy. I'm sorry, I should know the name, but I don't. I don't mean to be flippant. Um, I decided to pick this book up. I I think I remember giving a middle of the road rating to the first book. I actually like issue two better. Um, there's something about this book. There's something something very um, different and worthwhile feeling when I read this book. I really like this telling of Martian Manhunter's origin. And I'm a big origin fan in general. I think some of the best comics are all origin stories. Um, whether we tell Batman Year One, we've got uh, Daredevil, Man Without Fear. Um, there's a lot of different origin stories out there that I just, I don't know, I just think uh, that what makes a hero a hero, how they come to be, is some of the most interesting tales. And I've always thought Martian Manhunter was cool, because he has a cool name, he looks cool, but I don't really know much about him, really. Uh, hardly anything at all, to be honest. Um, I, I think my most knowledge I have about him is from the CW TV shows, um, which... Some of you might be laughing. Uh, yeah, but I'm, an, I'm a DC nub. Here's the credits for the book. Riley Rosmo is the artist. Um, a costly recapture. Now, we last left off. John Jones crashed the car. And, uh, you know, because in real world, cars just crash and airbags come out and that's it. But, like... In TV land, film land, comic land, any fiction worlds, cars catch on fire when they crash. <laughs> They're really designed not to. Uh, but we, we'll accept this trope. And Martian Manhunter, as I've learned, it, his kryptonite is fire. So he cannot control his shape-shifting abilities and everything. He's just out of control. And, of course, she is just, like, horrified. Just like, oh, my God. I got the thing in my car. Not not Marvel's thing, but John Carpenter's thing. Um, now, one of the biggest problems that this book is having, as far as reaching an audience, is the art style. And I can, I can definitely understand that problem. Um, I've come to a conclusion myself that the problem isn't so much the art style, but in how it's used. I think it actually works really well when telling the story of the Martians. It makes them feel really alien and different. But when you use that same style here, you lose that effect. I think if they would have made the humans look... Not so ridiculous, like here, but to contrast with the alien, it would have worked better. Um, the, and this is what kind of made me notice it. But with her, she's just wackadoo looking anyway. Um, so I was having some problems there. Now, I'm not going to go through and read this book. Um, honestly, I just want to show you the images here it's it's a flashback back to Mars with uh, John Jones. Um, you know what his life was like. He's making an appeal to her, his partner, um, to save him, and she's like, you know, you know, she finally does save him, and she she's like, you're gonna tell me everything, you know, and she he's like, I'm a cop, and I wasn't, you know, back on Mars, and so he's explaining. We get this interesting story, and, and I'm kind of captivated because as a DC nub, 
I don't know the story um, of John Jones. I know he's supposed to be the last of his kind, kind of like Superman. And I also know just like Superman, DC can't ever stick to that. So they have, oh, no, there's some other Martians that are running around. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, I like the storyline that's back on Mars about this plague, apparently. Um, that's like a drug-induced thing. Uh, he's Because he goes in here and he's like breaking up this drug den. And um, there's this conspiracy, very similar to like Krypton or whatever. He's like, the health con council doesn't know how to stop it. They're covering it up. Um, you know, within one mega cycle, every mile like an andron will be touched. Uh, that's their native tongue for Martians or at least the green Martians I'm still working that out uh, apparently there are three kinds of Martians the green, the white and the gold um, the greens can shape shift as far as I'm so far able to tell I know you DC experts probably know all this stuff already and you're like, and you know more than I you know, than what I'm figuring out but I'm having an enjoyment you know, learning this uh this backstory and about these characters and like I said you know the, the art style is really bizarre and it's it's gonna be subjective either you are gonna be able to tolerate this you're, or you're gonna just go blah I can't but when I was in Mars I, I didn't seem to have a problem with it um, it's it's not something that I want to see all you know but I think one book being done this way is okay um, and we've learned that John Jones looks like this because he modeled himself after a caveman. There's a lot of little details that I'm finding uh, really kind of fun to to learn about. So we can see lots of. It's just I'm mean, just going to tell you the art, you know. Um, let me go back to not in really present day Earth. A few years ago, <laughs> Earth. The story does not take place in present day obviously because it's telling it's like john jones year one if you will if we call the all the origin stories year one stories and uh it's it's kind of funny i guess his name is john johns and he's she's like is that a joke he's like i almost never use spoken words on mars all telepathy i didn't know how it sounded to human ears I suppose it's like a coincidence that he's imitating a dead cop whose name is John Jones. So it's it's like, oh, that's a weird, I don't know if, if it's a coincidence or I don't know. Um, I didn't, I, I, I suppose you guys that know the history more would, you know, make more sense of some of the things that, that are maybe going over my head. But the important thing about this book is whether or not it's worth buying. And I gotta tell you, the only thing that you really should be judging this book for is the art. And there's another, I just don't like the style for use of humans. Mostly this partner, who is the only real human he interacts with. Um, it just, like I said, if, if she looked more traditional style, and this contrast to this alien style... I mean, you hear he's like mid form, and he looks less wacky than she does. I don't, I don't know. Like a lot of people hate this art, and I can I can kind of understand why. Um, there's the final scene of this particular issue where she shoots him, and uh, next issue we get the death and the birth of John Jones. But I wasn't quite sure when I left issue one what I was going to think about it. And this issue kind of cemented the deal um, that I'm going to keep buying it. I don't like the art, but I'm able to tolerate it. It's, it's the shock factor is wearing off. I'm not just like, oh my God. Um, I didn't really ever hate it at first anyway. Like, and, and like I said, my, my issues are how it's, being used. I'm fascinated by this backstory. I love the little details. 
uh, and how they're explaining where he comes from, not just where he comes from Mars, but like what happens to Mars. Why, why is the society gone? Um, why does he have some of the beliefs that he does and different things? I, I love learning all these things. And like I said, he's always been a cool character to me that I knew nothing about. So this is really delving into his origin story, and I'm I'm hooked. This is of all the books I've been reading by Steve Orlando. Um, you know, I read The Unexpected, which I enjoyed, and I've done reviews on. I'm reading Electric Warriors right now, which I also enjoyed. Um, there was another book that Orlando did that I can't remember. So obviously, it wasn't that superb, but I enjoyed. I've enjoyed everything I've read of his. Electric Warriors, I thought was the most entertaining. The last issue was a little bleh. But this is the best. This feels like Orlando's best work. It's the solid writing uh, all around. It's, it's just very good writing. And it's just clashed with this art. And I, I like the actual cover uh, art. I, the, the line work is where this artist... Very polarizing. Um... And like I said, if in these shots, it's not, I think it would work better. But you're going to have to judge for yourself. You can see if it's something that you can handle. The writing's really good. Um, I believe this is a 12-issue maxi series. I have the alternate cover, so it doesn't say on it. I'm almost positive it's a 12-issue maxi series. This issue took me off the fence of whether or not to get it. I am going to be continuing this book, and I might continue reviewing it depending on uh, what the response is, but I wanted uh, to judge it more than off of just one issue. So that's it. I uh, hope this was informative, got something out of it, and uh, thanks for watching.